Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uh, today's class on selective catalytic reduction. Today we're going to learn about what SCR means to Volvo, to our trucks, most importantly to our customers. You know, it's been a long march towards lower and lower emissions. This chart shows the progression in, in soot, in black, uh, also known as particulates, or uh, it's the carbon that, that you find in the exhaust. And the blue line is, is one of the other pollutants that we call NOx, or oxides of nitrogen. And you can see that from 1974, starting at zero, and then the percent reduction, it's just been relentless where it, it dropped down and down and down. Uh, isolating the soot and looking at it a little bit differently, you can see that we were down to 0.25 grams per horsepower hour and got down to 0.1 in 1994 and then we stayed there because that was really no visible smoke and we were there for a while until EPA 07 came and when EPA 07 came it mandated a 90 percent reduction so the total reduction from start down to here is 99 percent and we found out and the whole industry found out that the only really good way to ensure that was with after treatment so there came the diesel particulate filter that everybody in the industry has I'm glad it happened that way because everybody made the switch at one time. We were the first market in the world to have a diesel particulate filter in any event that was necessary to have active regeneration to, to uh, oxidize the soot out of the filter. Uh, having said that, let's look at the NOx. NOx has been on the same kind of relentless uh, downward spiral. Uh, from six to five is what, 18%, from five to four, is 20% reduction from four to two and a half is about a 40% reduction from two and a half to 1.2 cut it in half okay and then from 1.2 to 0.2 is an 83% reduction year to year or if you start from the top down to 0.2 it's a 99% reduction okay there's 0.5 if you're using massive EGR uh, you're allowed to make 0.5 grams per horsepower hour and that only represents a 93 percent reduction but you can see that those of us who are using SCR will have achieved a 99 percent reduction and therefore when you look at the entire engine you look at carbon monoxide at hydrocarbons at particles and at NOx we've reduced everything by 99 percent our engines today make less emissions than a natural gas converted diesel it's like, what's the big interest in natural gas as far as a, a, an alternative fuel? Well, it's cheap and uh, there is plentiful. But beyond that, if you really are looking for low emissions, we beat them until such time as they figure out how to put a, a catalyzed diesel particulate filter on natural gas, which hasn't been developed yet. Uh, we will continue to have less particles. And after US-10, we'll have less NOx. Well, to get to where we've done, we've done a number of different things. In the 80s, we were the first manufacturer to have air-to-air uh, uh, -air intercooler mounted in front of the radiator. And today, every single diesel truck in the industry, in heavy-duty, medium-duty, and light-duty, has an air-to-air -air charge air cooler mounted in front of the uh, radiator. And that works pretty well. Um, then you see that with uh, this design, we've gone to exhaust gas recirculation. You've got it in your car. The purpose for exhaust gas recirculation isn't to um, reburn the exhaust, but really just to use it as uh, air that doesn't have very much oxygen in it, because that's exactly what it is. It's mostly nitrogen, because air is mostly nitrogen. And, and when you take it without much oxygen and, and take some of it, run it through the cooler, and then back around into the engine, what you're doing is diluting the oxygen into the engine to a lower amount. Normally, it's like 19% of the air that we're breathing. We can get it knocked down to 15% or even lower, depending how much EGR we use. And what happens when you burn fuel with less oxygen? The flame just dims down. What happens if you had an oxygen-rich atmosphere? You know, flames burn pretty rapidly, don't they? So that's the relationship there. And as the flame is dimmed down, as the temperature of combustion drops, that reduces the formation of NOx. So that's how we get rid of NOx, is with EGR. Um, something else that we've done to help maintain fuel economy is to use um, a high pressure, an ultra high pressure fuel injection system. What that really focuses on is the soot, and that allows us to alter the timing, which in balance with the EGR allows us to, to lower all the emissions at one time. 
We had an uh, injection system when the D12 came out that was in the low 20,000s, and by the end of the D12, it was up to, I believe, uh, 23, 27,000. And then we were at 29,000, then going into the D13, now we're at 35,000 PSI since the uh, introduction of the EPA 07 engine. That's the highest fuel injection pressure of any engine that's been advertised. Nobody else, none of the common rail systems are this close. Why is high fuel injection pressure good? It fully atomizes the fuel. And to quote one of our competitors, the finer the atomization, the lower the soot, and fuel economy can be improved. You have better combustion. And that's exactly why we're, we're focusing on this 35,000 PSI. Okay, so how do we go from here? Should we even have more exhaust gas recirculation? We define light EGR as a, a recirculation rate in the, in the range of 10 to 20%. We had that on the D12. And then with those seven, we have heavy EGR. So we're in there, it's 20 to 35%. The next step is to go to massive EGR. And um, it's kind of funny here because we had been using the term massive EGR and uh, we knew that some of our competitors that were going to use uh, massive EGR or EGR in those amounts didn't like the word massive, uh, to which our point is, well, Google it. If you just type in the words massive EGR in Google, it turns out that you'll find universities, you'll find the EPA, and a number of people in the scientific community referring to EGR in these levels with the term massive EGR. And that's 35 to even as much as 50%. The problem is it's not all that easy because you have to keep it in balance. Because as you increase the amount of EGR, then that changes the air to fuel ratio. So you have to pump a lot more of that in so the boost pressure goes up. And when the boost pressure goes up, that can affect the peak cylinder pressure. So then you have to watch out and you have to put in fuel pressure. Your power density goes down. So then you have to be careful. You might have to increase the displacement. You see how all this goes. And the major thing is you cannot exceed this NTE window, the not to exceed. So with more and more EGR, that becomes more and more of a challenge. And so we thought, well, there's another way to do it. And our solution will be to use the ultra high fuel injection pressure, which primarily addresses soot, to use light to heavy EGR someplace in there to knock down the NOx, to use DPF after treatment for near zero soot, as we are today, and then to use this SCR after treatment uh, to, to achieve the NOx.